Hi, I'm Jason Alster, and this is another episode of Meet the Author. Today, I'll be talking about my book, Creative Painting for the Young Artist. In the book, it deals with painter's block, distill the fear of painting, artist statements, the creative process, thinking positively about paintings, brainstorming for ideas, how to choose a subject, knowing your subject and be selective, define the essence of a scene, artist mode of seeing gazing, composition, creating interest, focal point, linear perspective, painting techniques, color personality, relaxation exercises, imagination exercises, ideas for creativity, a critique checklist, and my own artist statement. Now, I wrote this book because as a youngster, I could not paint, and I also had a problem with handwriting. And for that, um, over the years, I developed ways to, and I also learned how to improve my painting. And also, now I teach art, and then I wrote this book. And I also improved my handwriting, and the two go together, and I wrote, a, and I made a video. Anyone can improve their own handwriting. Now, the story behind this book, Create a Painting for the Young Artist, I'm going to mention in a moment, but there's a little bit of an art mystery that I solved to get to the point of writing this book. Now let me just show some pictures to get an idea. And I did this for youngsters because I really didn't have a book that could show me as a youngster how to paint and how to develop the creative process. Just to get an idea of some of the things that are in the book. Now, before I started this book, when I was a child, my, I knew that my grandfather, Joseph Alster, was an artist. And he lived in Poland and in Germany at the time of the Second World War. And he actually went through the Holocaust. But he did not survive. However, he left a painting that my family had. And this painting was over my father's bed post in the house that I grew up. And he painted a painting of a castle, and I didn't know exactly where this castle was because Joseph Oster lived in Poland. He was born in Poland, but he also lived in Germany. So I wasn't sure was this a real castle, was this a figment of the imagination, where exactly this was. And the other question I didn't know was Joseph Foster a professional artist, a good artist? At the time, I didn't know enough about art to determine that. When I found out, after I became an artist, I found out that he actually was a good artist, I incorporated his techniques into a page of the book. In this way, I brought him back to life. And some of the techniques we'll see in the painting, for instance, is that he did show, like a professional artist, an area of interest in the painting. He did highlight that. He did uh, have a proper horizon line, a vanishing point in the uh, painting. He had lines of perspective, and he also had cre he created visual movement. So yes, he was, uh, in a way, a professional artist. And um, I was able to bring him and his influence on myself as an artist through putting his painting in the book and using that to sort of like bring his painting style back to life. And because I wanted to find out more about him, I made trips all around Europe, in Germany especially, to try to track down where this painting might have come from. Before I go on, um, only recently it has been available from the Holocaust Museum in America. Uh, transcripts of people who perished in the Holocaust, and we actually got a transcript of my grandfather, who was in the Buchenwald concentration camp. 
Now, Ofter is a name I knew of a river in Hamburg, Germany. It's the Oster, I'm sorry, a lake. It's the Oster Lake. <clears throat> and I didn't know, uh, that was the place I wanted to start. And, uh, maybe um, in this area he, he lived and maybe he painted the painting in this area. So this is a picture of the Oster Lake in Hamburg where I started to try to find out what's going on. And what I found out is that there actually is a castle Ulster, an Ulster Tower in that area. And we see here in this photo, that's a bolt castle with the Ulster Tower. But that doesn't look like the castle in the painting. So that wasn't it. And um, different trips that I stopped over in Germany, because I lived in Israel, and I would uh, go back and forth between American Israel, and I would stop over in Europe on different trips, and also made some trips to Europe. Um, one of the places I stopped in, tra uh, traveled around in Germany, was near the Nuchschwanstein Castle. And here's a picture of myself in the mountains on, near the, in Bavaria, near the Nuchschwanstein Castle, which we'll see is the Cinderella Castle, more or less. That's what it's known for. Looks like the Cinderella Castle. A beautiful, beautiful castle, but that is not the one in the painting. So I had to keep looking. Coincidentally, in that castle during the Second World War, a lot of the paintings that were uh, stolen during the Second World War were hidden in that castle and freed by the Allies, of course. And there was another type of style of German castle in that area, and again, that doesn't look like the painting. So I had no idea what was going on. And I kept searching, and the years passed by, and I still couldn't find the castle. Then one day, my daughter, I was talking to her about our roots uh, in a book that I was writing, Leaving Home, Going Home, Returning Home, A Hebrew-American Soldier in the Land of Israel, and in this book, I actually talk about my travels. Uh, when I went to Germany, I had to make a decision if I wanted to go back because of the Holocaust. In the end, I did, and uh, meeting different peoples that lived there and my experiences, um, very interesting. And I talk about that in the book, Leaving Home, Going Home, Returning Home. So in the end, when I was talking to my daughter, um, and telling her about my roots, uh, a thing called Google Earth had just come out. And so I said, you know what, let me start looking for castles in Germany through Google Earth. And I started going through every single castle <clears throat> that I can find under castle images. And lo and behold, I found the castle that looks just like the one in the painting. However, if you see, it's a very unique shape. But you see in the photo, there are two spires, whereas in the painting, there are three. So we had something similar. It looked like the castle, but was it the castle? Why is there only two spires versus three? And one of, my, one of the ideas I had was that maybe during the Second World War, there was damage to some of the castles in... Um, the military things that were happening. Well, going a little bit further back, I found this paint, this photo, and it turned out that this exactly really looks like the same shape of the hill in the painting again, if we have a look. Very similar, this high, unique, flat top hill, okay? And it turned out that this is the castle. And the name of the castle, it turns out, is Drachenfels Castle. It's the castle where the story of a dragon that was slain. Drachen, dragon, fells, was fallen, slain. And this is a painting of a famous story, the Drachenfels story. And it's actually a book. And if we look at this map, um, I had been in 
uh, where the Drachenfels Castle is. It's over here. It's on the Rhine River. And myself, I had been in my journey, not too far away, I'd actually been in Frankfurt, which is around here, and in Bavaria and Munich, which is right around here. So I was traveling around the right area, I just didn't get to see the castle. I should have taken, taken a uh, trip down the Rhine, maybe I would have seen it. And here is a painting by another author, another artist, and we see just the two spires of the Drachenfels Castle. Um, so once I found out that this was the castle, I was very happy, and uh, I continued to put that into the book, create a painting for the young artist, and I enjoy it. Now today, what I basically do is I give workshops for helping artists um, of all ages learn how to paint and how to be creative. In addition, show another painting. In addition to the creative uh, pastel painting that I like to do, I also do painting in uh, Chinese watercolors of what's called bamboo Chinese brush paintings. And I give courses here in Wethersfield and in Glastonbury right now in adult education but also uh, wherever I have an opportunity to get an offer to give a course, all ages, youngsters, adults, senior citizens. Um, I give courses on painting either Chinese water color brush or pastel paintings. And I wanted to read a little bit about the courses. So creative pastel painting, learning to paint is easier than you think. With creativity specialist and author of the book, Creative Painting for the Young Artist. Learn the secrets of thinking, seeing, and being creative, just like an artist. Develop an artistic mode of seeing. The course will include creative artistic techniques, like artist statements, journaling for ideas, creating interests, being in the mood for art, sketching composition, perspective, focal point, line strokes, color values, all made simple. Learn to critique a painting. The student will complete a pastel painting that they will be proud to hang up. Now, the idea was that I found out that a lot of people who go to art classes, um, they're asked to just like sit back and look at a shoe and start to draw the shoe. And what happens is, is that in these three classes, there are people who think that they can't do it, and they drop out. And one of the ideas I found out by working with uh, students who have learning challenges, I used to work with students who have attention deficit disorder. And I wrote a book, Being Control, Natural Techniques for Increasing Your Potential and Creativity for Success in School. Um, I use, I, when I work with uh, people with learning challenges, I found out that it's about teaching different techniques and letting them get the small picture versus the big picture. And as I mentioned, one of the things I talked about was working with handwriting, and we have um, in the book, the handwriting, and that goes along with the idea of the painting because in the book itself of creative painting, I added ideas about handwriting. And the, uh, the ideas of improving your handwriting and vice versa is that if you think and see like an artist, you can improve your handwriting. And the two go together. Um, if you know how to paint, your handwriting will also improve. And some of the things I talked about in improving your handwriting are keeping all the letters, having uniformity, keeping the letters the same height, keeping equal distance between the letters and words, writing on the line, not above or below it, um, keep letters in the same direction, how to hope to hold the paper so that won't slide, and uh, when you're writing, also how not to have too strong of a grip. So it's about all the little things that you need to have to add it all together to get a better handwriting. So I combine the two, the, um, the handwriting with the uh, art. Now as far as the bamboo painting, how I got into that, well, Chinese bamboo brush painting, the bamboo is said to represent China. Strong, but also flexible. 
Chinese brush painting is meant to be more than a representation of an object. It is also a symbolic expression. Painting the leaves and stem, but never the whole plant, bamboo painting is all about the beauty of line. You will be amazed at all the different qualities of line you can achieve with just one brush, simply by changing the angle and pressure with which you hold the brush. Chinese bamboo brush painting lessons include brush stroke techniques, brushes used, Chinese ink, using rice paper composition, and space. And that's a very relaxing thing and a fun thing to do. And many people who do the um, Chinese brush painting, they say because they think it's easy, but in reality, there's a lot of technique involved. But yes, it is easy. You can learn to do that in a minimal of sessions. And I enjoy it. Whoever, gets, uh, whoever does it becomes really hooked on that sort of thing. Now, another thing that happened over the years, because I was an artist, is I also wanted to show that I developed my own technique for teaching students how to be artists, a shortcut, um, especially for students who don't know how to draw. They like pastel paintings because it's colorful, You're using uh, a pastel chalk and on a pigment, and it's a lot of fun. Um, reminds of when you were a kid, but a lot of people really have a problem drawing. So one of the things I did, and I think this is very unique, I took the pastel paper and I took a photo, and the photo I printed on top of the pastel paper. And in the end, you just draw with pastel over the photo. So you're not really having to draw using the photo as a base, but it's not on photographic paper because that won't soak in the pigment from the pastel. So I put that on pastel paper and I was able to print that in the printer. And here's an example of a painting. Now this is not my photo in this case because this is one of the very first ones that I did and I actually like this photo. It's of a door in Greece, but what you see is not the photo. What you see is pure uh, painting uh, on top of the photo. And another example, this one actually, the photo I took, it's of a uh, city, an old Nabataean city in the desert of Israel called the Negev, and it's called Advat, A-D-V-A-T. And it's sort of like uh, Jerash in Jordan. And again, I took the uh, I took the photo and I printed it on pastel paper. And this is what I got in the end. And you can really uh, get into fine detail without even knowing how to draw. And you have the fun of painting without having to draw, and it still comes out beautiful. Uh, maybe there's a little bit less of the creative technique. But for artists who are starting, it's a lot of fun. At least they get a very nice painting. And it is a painting because the uh, photo is underneath, but it is a painting on top. Um, and part of the idea how I had that is because I noticed um, really good artists in pastel, what they're doing is they're using watercolors underneath the pastel. So it's called what's called mixed media. And they're putting the watercolor under the pastel then they're drawing with pastel above the watercolor. And this is giving a certain see-through, shine, mixed-media technique. And it ha has a really, really beautiful effect. And I think I captured that with actually doing the photos and then painting on top of that. Um, well, that was uh, that's about what I have to say for the book Creative Painting for the Young Artist. And I hope you enjoyed the show. Stop.